Hello everyone, I'm Sign One News anchor Gaytree Prestode. If you post an interesting comment during this update, we may add it at the bottom of the screen. Now here's a quick look at the top trending stories making headlines today. A couple of big high profile criminal trials are in the news today. Late last night, a Chicago jury deliberated for nine hours and found former Empire actor Jesse Smollett guilty on five counts of disorderly conduct. For making false police reports, they believe that he paid two men to attack him in an effort to seek public sympathy. Smollett could be put on probation, sent to jail, or pay a $25,000 fine. But his lawyers say they are 100% sure the verdict will be overturned when they appeal. Also on Thursday, a jury found reality TV star Josh Duggar guilty on two charges of child pornography each charge carrying a maximum penalty of 25 years in prison and a $250,000 fine. Duggar was a star on the television show 19 Kids and Counting. Federal prosecutors say he used a video sharing internet service to download images showing the sexual abuse of toddlers and other children onto a computer in May 2019. A word of warning, the video in this story may be disturbing to some viewers. In Baltimore, a trans woman named Amber Cantor is suing officers for federal and state civil rights violations, as well as negligence and assault and battery, after she claims they dropped her on her face while booking her in jail. In the video, Cantor can be seen in a yellow jumpsuit surrounded by three correctional officers. One of them, a appears to wrap his right arm around Cantor's neck in a chokehold, then shows the officer lifting Cantor to her feet and off the ground while keeping her in the chokehold, dragging her into another room and then dropping her. It's unclear what led to the incident as the video has no sound. The lawsuit accuses officers of failing to seek medical treatment for more than 10 minutes and it claims Cantor was taken to an intensive care unit suffering from bone fractures to her face, severe bruising to the left side of her forehead, and internal bleeding behind her right eye. While Delta remains the biggest COVID-19 threat in the U.S., the Omicron coronavirus variant has now been detected in at least 25 states, 
cases, hospitalizations, and deaths rise once again, and officials continue to urge vaccination and boosters. As things stand now, just about one-fourth of vaccinated Americans have received their booster shots. But now vaccine makers are already talking about looking at the possibility of a fourth shot down the road, but they say it's still far too soon to say if it will be necessary. According to a new study, new cases of anorexia soared among kids and teens during the pandemic because young people had the uninterrupted ability to limit how much they ate, they had the uninterrupted ability to exercise as long as they wanted, and because adults were going through the same thing, kids were not being monitored. And doctors say now that we're entering a new phase of the pandemic, it's important to spot the red flags of an eating disorder early which include weight loss, a child isolating themselves, extra workouts, and cutting out entire food groups from their diet, like carbohydrates. All of these should signal a conversation is needed. And if you still have concerns, reach out to your pediatrician. Police say former NFL wide receiver Demarius Thomas was found dead at his home in Roswell, Georgia last night. Thomas played 10 seasons in the NFL and is considered one of the best wide receivers in NFL history. He retired earlier this year in June. Thomas's cousin said he had been suffering from seizures for over a year and believes he had a seizure while showering. Thomas was 33 years old. He would have turned 34 on Christmas Day. A federal appeals court ruled against former President Donald Trump in his effort to block his White House records from being released to the committee investigating the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. The court ruled unanimously that there is a unique need to see those documents based on the attack on the Capitol, but they will give Trump's team time to appeal their decision to the Supreme Court. Trump's team responded, this case was always destined for the Supreme Court. And finally, here's a feel-good story to wrap up today's update. Firefighters in upstate New York rescued a border collie named Tux from a frozen pond after his hind legs fell through the ice and he couldn't get out of the water. Firefighters suited up with yellow wet gear and safety cables and broke through the ice to meet up with the struggling dog. They carried him to the shore, dried him off, warmed him up, and reunited him with his grateful owner. Signwood News will be broadcasting live updates Monday through Friday. If you're unemployed or thinking about walking away from your nine to five job to follow your dreams, be sure to join us this Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern time for a live panel of diverse deaf small business owners as they share their stories of success and struggles. And you will have the opportunity to support these businesses during the holiday season. A big thank you to our Sign One News app supporters. You help make this broadcast happen. 
You can download the Sign One News app by heading to the App Store or Google Play Store on your smartphone, and you can also watch on Amazon, Apple TV, and Roku. Have a great day and a great weekend.